I think there's a number of challenges that folks who have had a transplant go through that are a little bit different than just the average person on the street. Of course, they've been often in and out of the hospital, and they've had a number of different medical procedures that often make it more difficult to sleep. So they have a very good reason to start not sleeping well. And then many of the things that they do to try to adjust and accommodate for the physical and mental health changes that occur after transplant are things that actually worsen their sleep. A challenge is that for many people, they expect that their sleep is going to get worse at some point or points throughout the actual transplant and the recovery period. And for most people, they make the assumption that once the medical stuff has gone away, that so too will the sleep problems. And unfortunately, what we actually see in research and in clinical practice is that that's not always the case. So it's important to be mindful from the beginning, even if, when you don't have sleep problems, to be sure that you're doing the right things as much as you can. And what's important is that folks have the skills when they encounter bad night or bad nights of sleep to be able to respond to that in a way that is effective for their sleep long term rather than their sleep short term, which is one of the fallacies and probably the biggest mistake people make when it comes to their sleep. There's things that we can do in order to be able to understand what sleep really is. Sleep is something that happens very naturally and we don't need to think about it, which for people who struggle to fall asleep or stay asleep at night is a challenge. They try really hard when they're laying in bed saying, please, please, please let me sleep. And that is unfortunately the exact opposite, the antithesis of what we want people to be doing. So one example of a skill is for people to recognize that the tighter you squeeze in trying to sleep, you actually are making it harder to sleep. And one of the thoughts is simply letting that go and recognizing that whether you sleep tonight or tomorrow is not as important as we might think. And our goal should be to worry about how we do in the long term. Sleep is the fundamental basis of how our bodies recover. And so it's important not only for physical health, but also for mental health and psychological well-being for somebody to be able to sleep consistently and be able to sleep sufficiently. And those are different things. And to be able to sleep well feels really good. And I, I think at core, that's why it's so important for me to see folks that I work with sleep well is they actually feel better and it makes the rest of life seem more, more manageable.